Hey guys, Mr. Relatable here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be going over how to make the Combination Lock 2.0, or the new Combination Lock that uses score managers, similar to the one that was in the Vault Hub. This one is going to be a tad bit different, as this one uses a lot less triggers and a lot less channels. For a 3 input Combination Lock, it actually only uses 7 channels, which is really, really good. So this one is very compact, very simple, and let's just hop right into it. So before I get into the tutorial, I wanted to do a quick demonstration to show you guys what it looked like and how it functions. As you can see here, we have three pillars, each having a button as well as a number on it, as well as we have a button on the ground here. What I'm going to do is type in the wrong combination first. So every time you hit this button, it's going to increment the number by one. So as you can see, it's one, two, three, and you can spam click it if you want to go up even higher. So I'll put eight, do a two, and then we'll put a five. So eight, two, five is not the correct combination. That's just a random number that I put in. And you can see that this door back here is locked and I cannot open it. When I hit this button, this is going to kind of submit the combination that we have listed here, as well as if it is incorrect, it'll wipe it as well as if it is correct, it will open the door and then wipe it. You can see here, since it's incorrect, it's just going to wipe the combination for us like so. And now we can type in the correct one. We can type in two, six, and a three. And now that we have the correct combination, we can hit our submit button and you can see it opens the door. So yeah, that is the little demonstration and we are going to hop into the tutorial right about now. Here we are right in front of my little playhouse that I made for this video. You can see that it's completely blank on the backside, as well as I have gone ahead and deleted all of the buttons, score managers, locks, and triggers, everything of the sorts. And we will just be starting from scratch here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab yourself a score manager. I just have everything in my little hot bar at the bottom for ease of access, but take a score manager and just plop it on down like so. Enter the settings and go up to the four bars at the top to where it says all options. First thing that we're going to want to change is score award type. We're going to put to set. Now we're going to want to scroll down to score increment. Put this to one minimum score. You're going to want to put this to the minimum amount of numbers that you want. So, for example, it's going to sound a little confusing, but for example, you can see that on my example, I had all the numbers start at zero. That is because the minimum score is on zero, as well as the maximum score is the maximum number that you want it to go up to. So in my case, I had it on at nine. Next, we're going to scroll down to visible in games. Make sure this on is on yes, so you can actually uh, see the physical number above the pedestal. And then we are going to change this to transmit on score. This is very important as this is how you are going to set up your combination. So for the sake of the video and just kind of explaining, I'm going to be picking a combination, the exact same one that I used, 263. So transmit on score, you're actually going to need to put one higher than what you want your number to be. So if you're putting the first number in your code to a two, so in my case, two, six, three, we're going to need to put transmit on score to a three, which is two plus one. Hope that makes sense. Activate when receiving from. You can just copy the exact channels that I'm going to use here for the sake of the video. Activate when receiving from. We're going to put this to channel five. Reset when receiving from. Put this to channel seven. Roll on down. Increment when receiving from. We're going to put this to channel one. And then on score output transmit to channel four. So now we have something that looks like this. If we go over to the modified options tab, you can look through and copy it if you've missed anything. Next, grab this and just move it on over as we need to obviously set up different numbers. We'll go back into here into our modified options and we'll put our next number. So we had two as the first. Now we're doing six which means we have to put transmit on score seven, as well as scroll down here to increment when receiving from, put this onto channel two. So we move it over one last time as the final number in two, six, three, three turns into a four as it's, you take the number and then you add one. Hope that makes sense. Last but not least, increment when receiving from, put this onto channel three. 
But yeah, now we're done with our score managers. If you just want to do what I did, all you can do is simply take these. I increased them by size in three. Oops, dropped it on accident. I increased it in size by three. Kind of centered it around the pedestal so you can see it's centered this direction. And now I grabbed it and just moved it on into the floor like so. But yeah, with that out of the way, we're going to hop right into the buttons now. So as you can see here, I just went ahead and placed these score managers in the pedestals just like I had it in the demonstration. And now we are going to pull out our buttons. I'm going to rotate it around so it's facing me. It doesn't really matter, but now we're going to hit customize. Make sure you go back to the all options tab at the top and now just scroll on down to the bottom and change a couple settings. Enable when receiving from, put this onto channel 7. Disable when receiving from, put this onto channel 5. And then when interacted with, put this onto channel 1. The other two things that you can change if you want are interaction radius. I like to have this on 0.5. This makes a blue circle. And then if you press E anywhere within this, so if your cursor is anywhere within this blue circle, it'll activate the button. It's very nice in case you accidentally put the button too deep in a wall, you wouldn't be able to activate it. Next thing is interaction text. You can put this to whatever you want. So for my case, I'll just change it to push button. After you do that, copy it, move it on over, and then change when interacted with transmit onto channel two. And then once more, move it on over when interacted with transmit onto channel three. Now we're gonna wanna grab a fresh button from our menu. Let's rotate it around yet again. And this is going to be kind of our submit button. So this was the button that was on the floor earlier enter it and make sure that the reset delay is on two seconds as well as when interacted with transmit onto channel five and then same thing interaction radius if you want as well as interaction text if you want that as well Good. so yeah that is all the buttons now in my case i'm just going to pick them up and i will just place them around here but i don't want to bore you with that so for now, that is it with the buttons. We are going to hop into the triggers right about now. I just went ahead and added the buttons into their respective places. This is the first one, so channel one. This is the second one, channel two, and then channel three is on the third pillar. And then finally, this button, which is our submitting button, is just on the ground. You can put this wherever you really want. You can have it on the wall over here. You can have it next to the door if you want it. Doesn't really matter. You can just put it wherever. But we're on to essentially the final step, which is setting up the triggers. And don't worry, there's only two of these, so don't be too afraid. First thing that we're going to want to change here is transmit every X triggers. We're going to put this to three as we have three combinations. So one, two, three. If you were to increase the number, you would just want to increase this. If you wanted a five digit combination, for example, you would increase this to five. But for the sake of the video, we're just going to do three. Put it on three. Enabled at game start. If you scroll down here, we're going to make sure this is dis uh, disabled and then enable when receiving from channel five and then a disable when receiving from channel seven. And then scroll on down, reset times triggered when receiving from channel seven, trigger when receiving from channel four and when triggered transmit on to channel six. That is all you need for this trigger. We're just going to grab a fresh one so it's easy. Take a fresh one like so. Set the delay down here to one second. Trigger when receiving from all the way down here to channel five. And then when triggered, transmit onto channel seven. So believe it or not, we are actually finished. Now you might be wondering, how do I hook this up to something? Well, this right here, this is your channel six. This is what you are going to want to hook things up to. So for example, if you wanted a lock similar to what I had, you can just grab a lock device and we can put it on down near the door. We're gonna customize on it. Now you can scroll down. Well, let's actually mess with a couple options up here. We're gonna make it off, first of all, and then we can unlock when receiving from channel six and then open when receiving from channel six. Um, if you wanted a barrier or something of the sort, you can also just do that with the barrier disabling on channel six. Essentially, you just want your output or whatever you want hooked up to this combination lock to activate on channel six. But with that, we are going to just start up the game so I can show you guys exactly what it does. And hopefully it all works. I didn't miss anything. Um, if you wanted, you could just hide these triggers and turn off their VFX, but for now it's not important. So if we just type in a wrong combination first, go to that, you can see 
nothing happens. Now if we type in the correct, which is 263. Six, three like so the door will unlock but yeah that is how to make the combination lock 2.0 it's actually very nice it's way better than the old method that we used to do as well as it just looks so much cleaner and it just functions so more efficiently so this is definitely going to be a must-have for adventure maps if you guys are interested in making those but yeah if you guys have any questions let me know but for that, I'm pretty sure we're done here. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.